Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Cybersecurity Awareness. Today we're going to be looking at how we will be able to detect a hack, a computer backdoor that was able to go around our antiviruses and our computer defenses. We will be looking at uh, this by using a tool or uh, network utility tool called the NetStat. All right. What is a NetStat? NetStat it is, uh, is, is a network utility tool that displays the protocol uh, statistics and the current TCP IP network connection on our system. All right, so let's get into it. How do we go about doing that? All right, so first of all, I'm gonna pull up uh, my command prompt. All right, here you go. So uh, the, the network utility we're gonna be using today is called, like I said, the NetStat, right? All right, so let's just first look at, uh, you know, what are some of uh, the options that we have available to use this utility? All right, we're gonna do NetStat tag H, which stands for help. And then we're going to see what are some of uh, the options we can use when we want to use this utility. All right, so we have tag A, the tag A options, when you use a NetStat with a tag A options, it displays all connections and listening ports, right? All the listening ports on your computer will be displayed. When you use a tag B, it displays the executable involved in creating each connections or the listening port. But uh, for today, uh, we're gonna be using the tag A, N, and O. All right, so the A displays all the connection and the listening ports. The tag N displays addresses and the port numbers in the numerical form. And then the tag O displays the owning process ID associated with each connection. All right, so having said that, now let's use the NetStat with our tags that we're gonna be using today, which is gonna be NetStat, tag A and O. You're gonna use all the three tags. And again, the first tag is what, well, tag A. It displays all the connections and the listening port. And then the tag N, displays addresses and the port numbers in the numerical form. We're gonna be interested in the port numbers and the addresses as well. And then we're gonna be looking at tag zero or tag O. It displays as well. It displays the owning process ID associated with each connection. So the tag O will display the owning process ID and the associated with, uh, uh, with, associated with each connections, okay. All right, so now we're gonna hit enter. All right, see right off the back, see what we got. We're seeing a whole lot of uh, our connection and listening port displayed on our system. But a point of interest for us is gonna be not the listening, because again, the listening is what it is. It is it is not a fully or an active connection yet but it's, uh, it's available and it's ready to receive any connection coming in. So we're not gonna be interested in that. We're gonna be interested in anything that says established because the established connection is, it tells you that there is an active connection between, you, between your computer and some other computer. And this other computer is what we are trying to look at. Is it, gonna, is it, a, is it a, a, a legit connection that you initiated or is it it's a bad connection from a hacker to your system that was able to bypass all your antiviruses and all your computer defenses and your firewalls and stuff like and stuff like that, right? So we want to be able to look at the net stat real quick and see if there is any connection that is suspicious on our machine. All right. So to do that, we're not going to be worrying about the listening part of it. We're going to be worrying about we're going to be worried about the establish. So for instance, here. Right off the bag, we can see that we have one established here. But before we do this, let's look at here. We have the protocol. The protocol. Look, let's look at the metadata. Right, we have all this here, 
we have the protocol, the local address, the foreign address, the state, and then the PID. So the PID stands for what? Process ID, right? And that's gonna be a very, very important to us. Okay. So now that we've established that, let's look at this first established connection. So you see, we don't have a lot of established connection, but we do have a lot of listening, listening connections and uh, listening that is ready for any active connection. But we're gonna be just assuming that, okay, we just wanna uh, examine all this connection to make sure they're legit connect connection that we initiated, right? All right, so first of all, we're gonna go with the first, uh, the first connection here that says uh, established connection. But when I looked at the, the local address, this is what the loopback IP and then the loopback IP. So this connection is what initiated by my computer to my computer as a loopback IP. So I'm not gonna be worried too much about this here because it's a loopback IP. All right, so when I go down, the only connection that I'm seeing with without a loopback IP that's gonna be of concern to me is actually some of these ones here. Because all these ones are what loopback IP 127.0.0.1. Those are what loopback IP. It's my it's connection from my computer to my computer. That's a loopback IP. I'm not gonna be worried about this. I'm not gonna be worrying too much about this here. But these ones I, I'm gonna be worrying about this this established here because I'm seeing a different IP address. You know, that is uh, is established connection from this local address, which is of course my uh, private IP on my computer here. And it's establishing the connection to a foreign address on a 443 connection on this uh, PID, process ID, right? All right, so if I'm gonna be concerned, I'm just gonna be like, okay, let me see what is this connection here and how do we do that? We're gonna go to uh, tax manager. All right, so here's our tax manager. All right, now I'm gonna do the, uh, the investigation. I'm gonna look at the, the process ID on my tax manager to, to identify what kind of uh, process is making that connection to my uh, computer. All right, so when I looked at here, I don't have anything that says process ID or state or publisher or what have you. And I need those in order to make my determination. So I'm gonna uh, right click on any of this and I'm gonna choose the publisher so I can display the publisher of each of the processes. And then I'll go back again and choose the process ID. I wanna be able to see the process ID, right? So now I'm seeing the process ID here. And the process ID that I'm gonna be looking at is what, 5828. All right, so the 5828, uh, let's start looking in and see where we're going to see this connection or this ID, 5828. 5828. All right, so you see, I'm seeing the 5828 here, right? All right, so this, because the reason why I kind of uh, uh, showed the processor, I mean, the, the publisher, because I want to be able to see if it is the legit company right? Because I'm seeing the 5828, this is a, a Microsoft Corporation, right? So I'm not going to be worried too much about this. It's a process internally that is establishing a connection to a Microsoft uh, process name here, right? So I'm not going to be worried too much about it, but because I don't have any other connection of suspicion, so this might not be uh, a good demo here, but I'm gonna try my best and, and uh, explain to you how you're gonna go about looking at this stuff. So when you look at the state here, right? Now we see the connection and establish and then we, you, you, you examine your suspicious PID, you go into your uh, uh, the tax manager and then you try to look at the tax manager and see what is the process. Is the process from a legitimate company? So you see, the 528 that we saw was from a legitimate company. Okay, so example, for example, or let's assume that we, we're gonna be looking at the publisher here, and then we see something that says unknown. See, all of these publishers are what? 
they are uh, known companies, Microsoft, Google, HP, you know, Zoom, what have you, you know, all of these companies are known companies. We know them, right? So there is, we're not gonna be worrying too much about them, but under this publisher, when you see anything that says unknown, right? That is a telltale sign of, uh, 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 telling you something that it might be a bad connection, right? Because if it is a legitimate company, the name of the company will be listed here, just like you've seen, Sophos, CyberGhost, and all of, the, all of, all of these uh, uh, companies, Apple, Adobe, you know, everything has a name, you know, uh, especially worry about here, right? Okay, but if you see anything under the publisher that says unknown, she go down, let's see if we can find anything unknown. All right, so there's nothing that stays unknown here, right? So now, you know, I, I don't have to worry because I know all the established connection on my computer is from a legitimate company or from a, uh, the processes are from a legitimate company, right? Microsoft and what have you. But let's just assume that this one here, you know, or this one here is, uh, uh, it says unknown. We're going to assume that this one, the Microsoft Corporation here is unknown. If this is unknown, and then the, you see that you have an active PID connection that stays established on your NetStat analysis, and then when you go to the tax manager, you actually identify the process ID, but the process ID that you identify, it is, it is corresponding to a publisher that says unknown, right? If that happens, then you know your computer is being, you know, it's, it raises some suspicion. Now you have to do the analysis and see, is this something that is a, a legit program on your computer now making a connection to your computer? How do you do that? So if we assume this is unknown, we're just gonna right click and then we're gonna go to open file location. So you right click on the suspicious PID and without a legitimate publisher name, you're gonna go to open file location. You click on open file location. All right, so this will open up the file location for you. So if this is, a, uh, if, if this is not a legitimate program, it's a bad program, you suspect that this program is bad, and then you have open the file location, it takes you to exactly what location the back door was established. And here's the deal. When a hacker hacks into your computer, it tries to uh, uh, establish a backdoor onto your computer, right? And then once the backdoor is established, it is sometimes it's a persistent backdoor. It means that even when you shut down your computer and you restart it again, you know, the connection reestablished. Right, so you're always going to see that established connection between a connection between your computer and a foreign computer, and in that case, you really have to make sure you do your analysis. And again, this is this this can be this can be uh, this this is not going to be a magic one, right? Because what happened is that some of these sophisticated hackers they know that when they you know build a backdoor or when they create a backdoor to your computer with an unknown process or on an, on a known process ID or an unknown publisher, you know, a lot of people will be able to identify that and delete the backdoor. So what they do is that they will actually attach the process or uh, their connection to a known processor, like a Microsoft process or a Google process or HP process or what have you. So in that case, you know, uh, it, is, it requires a lot of analysis in order for you to identify what process has been hijacked by the backdoor. Uh, but in any case, this is some of our, uh, this is some, an easy way for you to identify, you know, um, uh, a connection to your machine that is not something that you initiated. You know, you can identify that and then you can delete it. So once you do the uh, open file location, all you have to do is right click and then you delete this backdoor. You know, once you delete the backdoor, you go back into your tax manager and then you can highlight on the process and then you can end tax 
to end the current connection to your computer. And again, you do not have to delete or you do not have to end the current tax because once you end the current tax, you will not have a way to go back into the, uh, the machine and locate the backdoor so you can delete the backdoor. And if that happens, it defeats the purpose, right? Because the backdoor is already on your computer. The hacker can reestablish the, uh, the connection again because this is just the tax, right? You just ended the tax, the current tax. They can reestablish their connection again and then, you know, they're back into your computer. So you do not have to, you know, when you see the unknown connection, you just go and end the tax. You didn't do anything because the back door still exists. You're always going to leave the unknown, right click, and then open file location. And then if it is a suspicious file, you delete that back door. Once you delete the back door, you can come back and then end this current tax, right? You can end this current tax. Hope this was helpful.